Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your favorite quarterback hater, Robert Mathis, and you're listening to the For the Culture Podcast. This is the For the Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Diamond. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving, spent time with your families, ate good food, had a couple days off work, and watched some pretty bad football, at least in the first game and the last game. But that middle game, that Cowboy game was good as Thanksgiving football kicks off week 12 in the NFL as the Colts host the defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You take a look at the Colts' remaining schedule. When you are sitting at 6-5 and five and you're chasing a bunch of teams and you're battling for a playoff spot, every game is big. Now, with that being said, if you were to drop one of two games... You ideally would like it to be this week against the Bucs or on Christmas Day against the Cardinals. You'd rather lose one of those two NFC games rather than another AFC game. But when you're sitting at 6-5, and five, you don't want to lose any games, especially at home. So you have a chance here to beat Tom Brady. We haven't done that since 2009 in the 4th and 2 game. Belichick goes for it on his own side of the field. Colts get a stop. I want to say it was Melvin Bullitt gets the stop. It was close. Probably could have been reviewed. Colts take over. They go down. And I think Manning throws the game when he touched down to Reggie Wayne. Could be right, could be wrong. It's been a long time. Unfortunately, a very, very long time since we beat Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Over the next couple weeks, we will have a chance to beat Tom Brady and space the New England Patriots separately. This will be our first time seeing Tom Brady in a Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform. This is our 17th game. Obviously, it's our 12th game, but it's our 17th game because this is the game added. Everybody from the AFC South will play one opponent from the NFC South. And lucky, lucky us, we got the defending Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So we haven't seen Tom Brady in a while. This is probably the longest we've gone without seeing Tom Brady Probably since the beginning of Brady's career, because we played them basically every year. In the beginning, we were in the same division for a few years. Then in 2002, we go off to the AFC South. We're winning our division basically every year. They're winning their division basically every year. So we're playing each other every year in that first place game on the schedule. Every three years, you play their division anyway. And then we saw them a bunch of times. We saw them at least four times with Manning. And Brady matching up in the playoffs. And then a couple more times Manning met him when he was a Bronco. But Colts Patriots met a bunch of times in the playoffs. And then even with Andrew Luck, we saw them a few times in the postseason. Twice we saw them with Luck and Pagano. So we saw the Patriots a lot every year, twice a year for a long time. And it's kind of stopped the last few years. We haven't seen them, I guess, since 2018. Then 19, we don't see him. 20, we don't see him. Now 2021 would be that third year where we play the AFC East again. So we see the AFC East this year. We beat the Jets. We beat the Dolphins. We beat the Bills. We've beaten every team in the AFC East so far. We'll see the Patriots in a couple of weeks as we take a quick look at the Colts' remaining schedule before we dive in to the Bucks game preview. So this week, week 12, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the defending Super Bowl champs, coming to our house. Next week, we go to Houston. You can't lose to Houston. They stink. I know they did beat the Titans last week, which is crazy. And the Titans right now, you have Julio Jones on the IR. You have Derrick Henry on the IR. And now you have A.J. Brown today added to the IR. So they are down their top three playmakers. Can Tannehill score enough points to win games with that offense the rest of the way? They obviously have a cushion over us. They have a two-game lead plus the tiebreaker in the loss column. So they're essentially up three games on us. But that's going to be tough for them to win games. So take it one week at a time. Let's do our job. Let's beat the teams in front of us. But you could keep a side eye on the Tennessee Titans because when we lost to them, it looked like the division was over. The door has opened a crack, just a crack, but a crack nonetheless. So it is slightly open right now with the Tennessee Titans to win the division. Still a long shot because a lot of things need to happen. But if we win out, I think it's realistic with all the injuries on that Tennessee Titans offense. So Bucks this week, we go to T.Y.'s house and we play... The Texans at T.Y. Hilton's house next week. Then we have the week 14 bye. A nice late bye. You get a couple guys back. You get healthy. You rest up for the home stretch. We host the New England Patriots coming out of the bye. So you have two weeks to prepare for Bill Belichick. It's always good. It's always an advantage to be able to have an extra week when you go up against the greatest coach of all time. Following week, Christmas Day, we go to Arizona and we play the Cardinals on Christmas Day. Following week, we host the Raiders, another AFC game, another team we're battling with 
for a playoff spot. And then the final week, we go to Jacksonville, a place we haven't won since 2014, and we take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. So that's our remaining schedule. Very doable, especially after that Bills win. You have to feel good. We have proof of concept against a winning team. Proof of concept going on the road, holding on, building a lead, holding on to it, and beating a good team. Actually beating down and kind of blowing out the Buffalo Bills. In Buffalo, sloppy, rainy game wasn't a problem for the Colts. So you got to feel good about yourself going into Week 12. Now we get Tom Brady. We get the defending Super Bowl champs. It is so impressive what they were able to do last year. And now they're sitting at 7-3. and three. They have a three-game lead in the loss column of their division, which is the NFC South. So they look like another team that will win their division this year. They actually didn't win it last year. They got into the playoffs as a wild card. The Saints won that division. They still went on that run to win the NFC, obviously, to go to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl. So let's start off on the offensive side of the ball. For the Tampa Bay Bucks, first in points per game. So last week we saw second in points per game, which was the Buffalo Bills. This week we see first in points per game. So another tough test for this Matt Eberflus defense. They are first in points per game, scoring 30.9 points per game. I think the Colts have the number one offense in points per game over the last five or six weeks, I want to say. So we've been very good as well. And we've been averaging over. 30.9 points per game, I think, over our last five or six. They've turned the ball over 13 times. They've allowed 13 sacks, and they are led by future Hall of Fame quarterback. You might as well put him in right now, Tom Brady. He has seven, seven Super Bowl rings. It is mind-blowing to think about how much this guy's won. I didn't think he'd be able to do it without Bill Belichick. He goes to Tampa Bay. He wins it his first year as a 40, what, 43-year-old man without a training camp, without a preseason, goes to a new team, Basically implements his system with a bunch of new players and they go out and they win a Super Bowl his first year in Tampa Bay. Just bonkers. And it's easier for me to give him credit now. I think one, because of his age, two, because he's doing it with the second team and three, which I guess is two again, because he's not with the New England Patriots. I hate the Patriots so much and we all do as Cole fans that I think it's a lot easier for me to respect it and admire it with him doing it in another uniform and him doing it with the Tampa Bay Bucks. And again, this year, you take a look at the numbers. It is truly incredible what he's been able to accomplish. 3,177 passing yards, 29 passing touchdowns, which leads the league. The man is 44 years old and he's leading the league in passing touchdowns to go along with eight interceptions. You take a look at some of the other Skill guys on this offense, running back Leonard Fournette. We remember him from Jacksonville, 521 rushing yards, averaging 4.3 yards per carry, four rushing touchdowns. Wide receiver Chris Godwin, 63 receptions, 782 yards, five receiving touchdowns, really good receiver. Another monster at the receiver position, Mike Evans. Not as many receptions or yards, 47 to go along with 679 Yards, but the man has 10 receiving touchdowns, including Tom Brady's 600th receiving touchdown from earlier this season. I believe they'll be without Antonio Brown this week. And then Rob Gronkowski, I think, is questionable heading into week 12, which means OJ Howard, I guess, would get a majority of the tight end snaps if Rob Gronkowski is unable to go. Now, taking a look at the keys to the game for the Colts defense. Key number one, pressure Brady with the front four. Pressure him for four quarters. It's imperative that you're able to pressure him with the front four. You don't want to be blitzing and taking other guys out of coverage because Tom Brady is so good at picking apart a defense, especially a zone defense. So when you go up against a guy like Trevor Lawrence, I really like our defense because I think a guy like him who's not the brightest bull. I mean, first off, the guy's only a rookie, so you have a lot to learn when you're a rookie, but you're not going to take what the defense gives you same thing with Allen I know Allen had a good game against us in the playoffs and he made a couple of elite throws on the run down the sideline but he's still the type of quarterback I like to go against I like when this defense goes up against guys who are risk takers guys who will just throw the ball up to throw the ball up because we're the type of defense that takes advantage of that I don't like the quarterbacks that take what the defense gives him especially because we play a lot of zone and we give quarterbacks a lot we dare them to take it and to go the long way and a guy like Tom Brady is capable of going the long way because he's so patient and he's so smart so you want to put pressure on him of course because you always do and Brady will fold we've seen Brady lose two Super Bowls to the Giants because of pressure 
He doesn't like pressure. Nobody does. He doesn't handle it well. The problem is it's hard to get there. It's hard to put pressure on him because he gets the ball off so quick. And you have to do it with your front four because you don't want to take guys out of coverage. You need as many guys covering guys as possible going up against Tom Brady. So that's key number one. Pressure Brady for four quarters. Pressure him with your front four. Key number two, force turnovers create a couple takeaways in this game we are currently leading the nfl in defensive takeaways we're also number one by a pretty solid margin in the plus minus category so right now we have 25 takeaways in 11 games the bills tied 25 takeaways in 11 games after getting four takeaways and turning it over zero times at buffalo last week we are plus 15 in turnover differential they're plus nine they're second in the league at plus nine we have six more in the plus minus category than them we've turned the ball over six less times in the plus minus than they have which is an incredible ratio so we right now have a really strong lead that goes for both sides of the ball you don't just get that by getting takeaways you don't just get that By holding on to the football. You need to do both. And we've done both this season. We've protected the ball. And we've created turnovers this season. That is key number two. Brady has eight interceptions. He's playing great football. But he has thrown eight picks in ten games. He throws a lot. So there will be a lot of opportunities. They have fumbled I believe five times. They've turned the ball over 13 times. Which is right there in the middle of the pack of the NFL. They turned the ball over 13 times through ten games. So we will have opportunities at home to get the crowd into it to create short fields for our offense that is key number two and key number three no big plays you look at mike evans chris godwin they have a lot of playmakers on this offense you don't want them to explode now they're going to be without antonio brown they might not have rob gronkowski that will make it harder for them to hit those big plays but you got to take away godwin you got to take away mike evans those two receivers right now have 15 touchdown receptions through What is it? 10 games, which is crazy. So Evans is averaging a touchdown per game. Godwin a touchdown every other game. You want to keep those guys out of the end zone. You want to prevent the big play, the slash from going downfield, taking the crowd out of it, taking the air out of the stadium and beating you over the top on a big play. So make them go the long route. Make them dink and dunk. Brady's great at that too. He could beat you in either way, as we've seen many times over the years with Tom Brady. But with this offense, the way they're set up, With the playmakers they have, you really don't want to give up the big play. And I feel like we've been better at not giving up the big play in comparison to the beginning of the season when we gave up a lot of big plays. Look at the Rams game, the Seahawks game. We were giving up big plays, the Titans games. But the last few weeks, we've done a much better job minimizing big plays. Outside of that one big run against Jacksonville, they had one run around the left side off the left tackle, and they took it to the house for like 60 yards But other than that, we've done pretty good. Last week, the Bills never really beat us on big plays. So key number three, limit big plays. Now taking a look at the Tampa Bay Bucks defense, 11th in points per game, giving up 22.2 points per game. A lot of twos, 2-2-2, points per game. They have forced 18 turnovers. They have 24 sacks. So pretty solid defense to complement the number one scoring offense. They're a good team. They're a team that could definitely come out of the NFC and represent the NFC in the Super Bowl yet again. You look at linebacker Devin White, 87 tackles, pair of sacks, four tackles for loss, 10 quarterback hits, really good linebacker. Also Levante David, 64 tackles, a sack, a forced fumble, tackle for loss, three quarterback hits, so a couple really good linebackers. Vita Villa, I always struggle saying his name, but... Defensive tackle, 19 tackles, one sack, two tackles to loss, six quarterback hits, really good player, and will be a factor in the Colts' incredible rushing attack. I think he's questionable in this game. So if he doesn't play, that'll be an advantage for the Colts, especially because Quentin Nelson was full yesterday in practice, and I think it's looking like he's going to play. Defensive tackle, Ndamuk and Sue. Sue's had such a crazy career. He's bounced around a whole bunch after being a Hall of Fame caliber player with the Lions for a long time he then went to i think he went to like miami and he started bouncing around a little bit and now he found himself in tampa bay won a super bowl last year he's really chilled out because he was a lunatic early in his career stepping on guys calves kicking guys on the ground i mean he was always getting suspended the guy was a real hothead and he's cooled off 
over the last couple of years. And now he found himself in a really good spot as like a veteran kind of guy who's more of a journeyman, but found a spot on a great team and was part of a defense last year that went out and won a Super Bowl in Tampa Bay. 14 tackles, three sacks, four tackles for loss, 10 quarterback hits, still playing at a high level. And Adamic and Sue, a really interesting player when you look at his career because he was a Hall of Famer in the beginning of it. And now he's kind of padding stats on a Super Bowl team. So very interesting career. Defensive end, Shaq Barnett, great player, 33 tackles, five and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, five tackle for loss, 12 quarterback hits. He really leads this defense. A safety, Jason really wanted the Colts to draft last year. Winfield Jr., really good young safety in his second year, 46 tackles, couple forced fumbles, a sack, a pick, a couple tackles for loss, couple quarterback hits. It's a good defense. Some other guys, like they got Jason Pierre-Paul, Carlton Davis. So they, they have guys on this defense, a lot of names. Up and down the roster on both sides of the ball, they have a lot of household names on this team. They're kind of like a has-been collection of players, but they're still playing at high enough levels where they're a good team and they're tough to beat and they're sitting at 7-3 and three coming off a championship. So you take a look at the keys to the game for the Colts offense. Key number one, no turnovers. Tampa Bay is 0-2 on the road when they don't force a turnover we've been good at protecting the football we are plus 15 in takeaways this season takeaways to giveaways we are plus 15 we lead the league by a wide margin we have a plus six plus minus lead in the national football league in turnovers so key number one straightforward they don't win when they don't create turnovers on the road and we basically don't lose when we don't give it up so Let's force some turnovers and let's protect the football offensively. Key number one, straightforward, no turnovers. Key number two, do we need to say it? Feed JT, feed number 28, Jonathan Taylor. Be balanced, hit the checkdowns. They will be there. Get 28 involved, get Hines involved, but feed 28. He's the best back in the league. I think Reich knows that now. Why abandon it? Why not get the best, not just the best running back, the best playmaker? He might be the MVP of the National Football League. Get Jonathan Taylor involved. Keep him involved in this game. And key number three, if you do key two and you don't turn the ball over, key three I think will happen. Convert in the red zone. Convert in the green zone. We're still not a great, great, great red zone team because the beginning of the year holds us back, but we've gotten much better. Last week was great. When you have a running back like Jonathan Taylor, there's no excuse to not be great in the green zone. How are you supposed to tackle this man? With this offensive line, the way they are, maybe not in pass pro, but run blocking wise, the way they're able to get downhill and push guys and move guys with a running back like Taylor, there's no excuse not to score when you're down in the green zone. So key number three, convert in the red zone, convert in the green zone. Key number two, get Taylor involved. Key number one, don't turn the ball over. If you do those three things, I just don't see how you don't score 30 plus points in this game. I think it's right there in front of you against a good Tampa Bay team. So, as for the predictions, me and Jason differ on this one. Jason's going Tampa Bay by 8. He texted me Tampa Bay by 8. He did not say how he thinks they're going to get there. As for my prediction, I'm going on the opposite side. I'm taking the Colts in this game. I think the Colts find a way to win this game. I think that we're coming in riding high off that Buffalo win. I think that we match up. Well, I think our offense matches up well with their defense. I think we will score points. Defensively, I think it's going to be tough. I think Brady is going to take the underneath stuff, and I think he's going to be able to pick us apart with that because he's so good against zone. But I think we're going to be able to score enough points, and I think takeaways will be the difference. I think we get one or two. I don't think we turn the ball over, and I think that's the difference in this game. I'm going Colts 31 Bucks 28. I think it's going to be 31 28 Colts, maybe a late field goal, and we find a way to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Also, crazy statistic for you guys, real quick, or probability, whatever you want to call this. If we beat Tampa and we beat Houston week 12 and 13, we will go into the bye week 14 with an 82% chance to make the playoffs. If we lose to Tampa and we beat the Texans, we will enter the bye week with a 56% chance. If we beat Tampa and we lose to Houston, it's basically the same thing. So if you go one and one, it's either 56% or 54%, a little bit lower because Houston is an AFC team. So it's a little bit slightly lower because of like the fourth tiebreaker or whatever that would be. 
And then if you lose both, you're basically done. You'll have a 26% chance. I think it's over. I think it should be lower than that. Mathematically, maybe it's 26, but realistically, you'd have like a 2% chance to make the playoffs if you lose both these games going into the bye. So you win both, 82%. You split. We'll split the difference and say 55%. So you really, really, really want to win these two games. Houston, there's no excuse. We should go in there. We should blow the doors off them in the house that T.Y. built. So it starts this week. Go out, beat Tampa Bay, beat the defending Super Bowl champs, stack another really good win on the Buffalo win. That'll be four in a row. I don't want to stop this momentum. If you're going to lose a game, you're better off losing to NFC teams. I agree with that philosophy. But why lose? Go out one game at a time, 1-0, beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Big game again. Go into the bye week with an 82% chance to make the playoffs. That's how I look at it. Beat the Bucs. Beat the Texans. Go into your late week 14 bye in a spot where you are comfortable, in a comfortable spot to go out and make the playoffs. So we'll be back Sunday night. It's a 1 o'clock game. So we'll be back Sunday night to wrap it up. Should get it up around halftime of Sunday Night Football. I don't have anything else to do. So we'll be back. Jason will be with me. That'll be Sunday night. If you're going to the game, enjoy it. Boo Tom Brady. Boo the Tampa Bay Bucks. And let's hopefully go out and get a big win in Week 12. Let's improve to 7-5. and five. We'll be back to wrap it up Sunday night right here on the Fourth Culture Podcast.